This is a battery charger and a DC-DC converter designed to deliver both 5 volts and 3.3 volts. It automatically switches power input from USB to battery when you unplug it. Sounds like a small UPS, doesn't it? Let me show you how I made it. Let's go! This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I enjoy browsing AliExpress in my free time, hoping to discover some hidden gems. Maybe that's why I've got a mountain of dev boards piling up. One of them is a board with an 18650 battery holder. The battery can be charged when connected with a USB cable. If not powered by USB, it can be powered by the battery itself. I bought the board on AliExpress a long time ago, and I wasn't aware that it had the TP5400 chip. This chip enables the board to be powered by a rechargeable 18650 battery. After some research, I was intrigued by its features, so I decided to build an experiment board. If successful, I can integrate the circuitry into my future projects. As you know, many development boards do not come with an integrated power supply, which is sufficient during the development and the testing phases. However, incorporating a power supply into the package is essential for transforming them into sleek, compact final products. That's the motivation behind starting this project. In this video, I will share what I researched and learned during this process. I will also give you a simple introduction to the TP5400 and explain the schematic I use. So keep on watching! While many of you may already be familiar with the 18650 battery, here's a brief description. The 18650 battery is a type of lithium-ion rechargeable battery, named for its dimensions, 18 mm in diameter and 65 mm in length. These batteries have a high energy density and are used in many electronic devices. In particular, they are used in a variety of applications such as cell phones, laptops, flashlights, power tools and electronic cigarettes. And their performance is improving as lithium-ion technology advances. I recently took apart an old vacuum cleaner at home and found it also uses a lot of 18650 batteries. The main feature of the 18650 battery is its high energy density to provide continuous power for a long time. However, they must be handled properly and it's important to combine them with the devices that are equipped with protection circuits to prevent overcharging, overdischarging, and overheating. It's important to handle them safely as improper use can be dangerous. You can find them available for purchase online, but it's important to note that some come with built-in protection circuits while others do not. The unit I bought appears to lack a built-in protection circuit, so using the TP5400 as an external circuitry for added protection in this situation is a perfect fit. Now that you know about the battery, let me explain the TP5400 chip, which will be the main focus of this video. The TP5400 is a constant current, constant voltage regulator designed to manage the charge and boost discharge process of a single lithium-ion battery. With a well-designed PCB layout, it can deliver up to 1000 mA of charge current. Its boost circuit, featuring an N-channel power MOSFET, requires only an external inductor, a Schottky barrier diode, 
and a minimum number of capacitors to generate a stable 5 volt output. When a load is connected to the V out pin, the TP5400 ensures a reliable 5 volt supply with a 1 ampere drive capability, making it suitable and sufficient for driving microcontrollers such as ESP32. Notable features of the TP5400 include charge control and protection, low power modes, LED indicators, and a user-friendly design. This chip is ideal for efficiently managing batteries in DIY projects and portable electronic devices. Additionally, its integrated voltage booster circuit means you don't have to add an extra IC and additional booster circuitry, resulting in a compact and simplified design. I added a link to the datasheet in the description section, so you can take a look if you are looking for more details. As always, I began drawing the schematic in KiCad, referring to the datasheet. The circuitry surrounding the TP5400 is essentially replicated from the schematic provided in the datasheet. Before delving into the schematic details, let me provide a brief explanation of the charge circle. When the voltage on the VCC pin exceeds the UVLO threshold, the program pin is pulled down to ground, and the battery is connected to the charger output. The charge cycle is initiated. If the voltage on the battery pin is less than 2.9 volt, the charger enters trickle precharge mode. In this mode, the TP5400 provides a constant current of one-fifth of the set charge current to raise the voltage to a safe level to achieve a full charge. When the voltage on the battery pin reaches 2.9 volt or higher, the charger switches to constant current mode and it delivers a constant charge current to the battery. When the voltage on the battery pin reaches the final float charge voltage, the TP5400 switches to the constant voltage mode and the charge current begins to decrease. When the charge current reaches one-fifth of the set value, the charge cycle is terminated. The charge current is adjusted by a resistor connected between the program pin and ground. The following approximate formula is used to calculate the resistance of the resistor based on the required charge current. In my circuit, R1 is the resistor mentioned in the datasheet. This resistor controls the charge current. As you can see in the table, if you want the charge current to be 1000 mA, set R1 to 1.1K. In my case, I want to be a little more conservative, so I set it to 2K. This means the charge current will be around 560 mA. In my circuit, I've included two inductors for experimental purposes, enabling testing with various inductance values. However, in practical applications, only one of them is necessary, and only one should be soldered into place. A user-friendly LED indicator circuit is incorporated to provide information on the battery charge status and other relevant details. This feature is easily accessible by connecting a resistor and an LED. If not required, connecting and user pins to ground is okay. I've decided to include this indicator circuit in my design. Additionally, a table is provided to show the meaning of different indicator status. The blinking duration of the red LED is determined by C9 and C10. For instance, with the 10 microfarads capacitance, the blinking time ranges from 0.5 to 2 seconds. As mentioned above, TP5400 is a constant current constant voltage regulator that controls charging and boosting. 
But what is often misunderstood is that charging and boosting can be done simultaneously. Unfortunately, it is not possible to charge and boost at the same time. Therefore, a dedicated circuit is necessary to control both charge and boost functionalities. However, this part was quite a challenge. After experimenting with several circuit patterns, I finally achieved the desired functionality. More details on this later. For now, all you see in this video is a finalized version. I also added a circuit to convert the output from 5V to 3.3V. This way, I can connect it to any 3.3V circuit and verify it in the experiments. In this setup, I use USB-C as the main input, and there is also a USB Type-A output to charge other portable batteries if necessary. To help users see what's going on and troubleshoot, the circuit has LED indicators for VBUS, 5V, and 3.3V outputs. These lines show if the outputs are working right. Plus, each output is easy to connect using a pin header making it simple to use in experiments. I also added a switch to manually disconnect the battery. Another important feature, isn't it? After the schematic was ready, I switched to the PCB designer to design the PCB layout. For this board, I've gone with a two-layer PCB design. I arranged all the components based on the suggestions in the datasheet to ensure the most efficient and reliable configuration. It is recommended to place capacitors close to the chip pins for VCC, battery, and V-out terminals in the application of TP5400. At the same time, it's strongly recommended to parallel a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor near the pins. Try to put the peripheral components as close as possible to the chip and make the connections as short as possible, especially the connections to the components connected to the V-out terminal should have their wire lengths minimized as much as possible. The ground terminal should be adequately grounded, otherwise the zero potential inside of the chip will fluctuate with the switching current leading to unstable operation. After wrapping up all the design work, as usual, I placed an order with the PCB way, and they did a fantastic job, just like always. The new PCBs look shiny and nice. After carefully soldering all the components, the experiment board is ready. The charging process operates seamlessly, and the discharge boost function works well too. After numerous struggles, it finally performs as intended, allowing us to reliably obtain 5V at the output. The indicators accurately display the current status. Well, as mentioned before, I didn't come together smoothly from the beginning. In my first design, I used a transistor and a MOSFET meant to serve as effective controls for managing both charge and boost discharge operations. This circuit is taken from the TP5410 datasheet. The TP5410 is the one that has a similar functional configuration to the TP5400. However, as you can see, it behaves more like a latch circuit. When the USB cable is unplugged, it fails to switch to booster mode and it doesn't supply 5V at the output. Fortunately, I have another ongoing project that accomplishes a similar task. In that circuit, a very simple and typical power supply switching circuit is used. With the assistance of the partially implemented PCB from that project, I was able to confirm successfully that it could also be applied to this PCB. Let me give a brief explanation of how it works. 
When the USB cable is plugged in, VBUS is at 5 volt. The TP5400 switches into charging mode, with the MOSFET gate pin set to 5 volt and the drain pin's voltage less than 5 volt. Consequently, the MOSFET turns off, allowing VBUS to supply 5 volt to the load. When the USB cable is unplugged, the TP5400 switches into booster mode. The drain pin voltage becomes 5 volt, while the gate pin voltage is pulled down to 0 volt by R2. Turning on the MOSFET. As a result, the battery supplies power to the load. Once again, with the updated PCB, I can now confirm that everything is functioning perfectly as expected. When the USB cable is unplugged, the board automatically switches to booster mode, using the battery as a power source and provides 5 volt at the output. When the USB cable is plugged in, the board switches to charging mode and the 5 volt output is supplied by the USB instead of the battery. This means you can still get 5 volt even if you turn off the battery connection. While this project is primarily experimental, the validated circuit is useful and can be applied to various other scenarios. One notable application is in the electronic design of portable game consoles, offering a perfect solution for charging the battery without the need to remove and reinstall it from the case. Virtually all portable devices can leverage this particular circuitry to incorporate a rechargeable battery with the charging functionality. In this project, I designed my own PCB for TP5400 and tested it. It worked well as expected. By adding this circuit to other projects, it can make your project powered by a battery and the circuit can keep operational when charging the battery. Well, I guess that concludes this video. If you find something interesting or find this video informative, please consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.